It's time to dance and shout and praise and say, triumph, I will triumph over my enemies. I have already been given the victory. The word of God is emphatic. It's God is not a liar. He's not a man that could lie. He, he's God. So if you believe the word, then get up and put the word in action. So you want to know about this banner today. Triumph. Look at those beautiful, brilliant, bright colors, saints. The orange. Woo! The reds, the purples, all of that. It just kind of looks like some amazing fire. So I'm looking into all the the banners and the flags and the meanings. Saints, this beautiful triumphant flag of victory. It's a warfare flag. It's a warfare flag. Come on, saints. Where yeah, this is a this is war. If you think you can just sit passively by and do nothing, you are mistaken. That's why the devil took all your stuff. That's why he's afflicting you. And that's why he's getting away with it, because you don't know the rules. Warfare comes from the orange descent stone representing the tribe of Gad. Woo, isn't that awesome? That's in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 8. And they're there separated themselves unto David. Woo, King David, the worshiper. Yeah, something to do with triumph. If you want triumphant victory, woo, you're going to have to worship in spirit and in truth. And they're separating themselves unto David, men of might, men of war, fit for battle, woo -hoo, that could handle the shield and the buckler. You know, the armor, the full suit of armor of God. Yeah, the shield and the buckler. You got to have the truth. You got to have the faith. Woo, come on, saints. They were fit for battle and could handle the shield and the buckler. Can you handle the shield and the buckler? Or are you just giving lip service? I, hey, I'm exhorting you today. Exhortation is a, a, a warning, an encouraging warning that you get up and be about your father's business. Put your agenda down and pick up your banner, your sign, your ensign. These men, it says, whose faces were like the faces of lions. Woo! Hallelujah! Mm. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, that was yesterday. And these men were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Saints, do you understand that we are soldiers? And this triumphant flag of the beautiful orange representing the warring warfare from the orange descent stone representing the tribe of Gad. This is a war that we're in. You're supposed to be a worship warrior. If you can't worship, how are you going to get out and fight a battle? You are, you're not because you have to fight it as if you've already won it. And the only way you've already won it is if you know who you are in Christ Jesus. He's already given you the triumph. He's already given you the victory. But you're still going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're still going to have to put on your suit of armor, the full armor of God, the whole suit of armor of God the girdle of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking up that shield of faith, putting that sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word of God in your hand, out coming out your mouth. You're going to take that helmet of salvation. You're going to accept it on a daily basis. Receive it. Put it on. You'll have the mind of Christ. You will pray always with all supplications and prayers for all saints everywhere. But you know what the problem is? We're lazy saints. We want revival. Woo! Woo, whoop, 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 whoop. I want revival. Come on, preacher, preach. Problem is, the preacher's preaching, pointing at you. He's got three, three fingers pointing back, and he still ain't showed you how to get revived. Yeah, that make you speechless, won't it? It's going to take some warring in the spirit. Oh, Jesus, would you please come and bless us? Please send revival. How's that working for you, saints? It ain't. It ain't, saints. And the reason it ain't is because our heart ain't where it's supposed to be. And that's in true submission and surrender to the Holy Spirit.
Spirit living in us. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The problem is, everybody's doing a whole lot of resisting without doing any submitting to God first. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Got a little speck right there. Woo, Lord. Don't want that getting in my eyeball. Thank you. Woo. Nope. See, it's still there. That's just wrong. That. Ow. Don't want that in my eye. Woo, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Got the Holy Ghost fire and I don't want no speck in my eye. Because if I get a speck in my eye, I ain't going to be able to see. Mmm. Done got the logs out. Now I can see the speck in somebody else's eye, but I don't want none back in mine. Remember, preacher, you pointing at them. Leslie, you pointing at them. You got three pointing back at you. Revival starts with me. Revival. It ain't going to start unless there's a fire. It ain't going to start unless there's some war. It's, there's not going to be no revival without some triumphant warriors. Woo, where's that at? Look at Revelation 7, 9. The, multiple, the multitudes without number strategically placed before the throne of the, God, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're standing there. How, how do you relate to standing before the throne of heaven? The throne of the Most High God. You got to understand where the throne is. You've been given the victory. You have triumph in Christ. You can enter the throne boldly. Jesus was asked, where is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom of God? It's simple enough, saints. Within you! Oh, how simple is that? The kingdom of God, the kingdom is inside you and me. You got to get up. You got to move. You got to get in the, you got to get in the battle. Warring. Orange, beautiful, triumphant victory that the Lord has given us. But we want to sit there and ask him to come and do something, what he's already given us the authority to do. Because he sat down and he, sa he said, it is finished. And then he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He said, now, Leslie, you go do something. You go speak for the voiceless. You go be hands and feet for my body. Are you the hands? Are you the feet? Are you the voice? What are you? An arm, a leg, a toe, a finger? Are you the are you the rear end? Are you the foreground? I don't know. That's for you to find out. But the body will fit together. And it will be in harmony. Because if my foot wants to go off that way and my head wants to go that way, I'm in trouble. I might need to see a doctor. Oh, that's the problem, saints. Maybe we need to see Dr. Jesus so we can get this right, so we can move forward instead of standing still. We're going to stand before the throne. We're going to worship before the throne. But until then, we need to be moving forward on earth. Today's believer, do you think they even understand that the throne of God can be found in one place? It's inside us, the Spirit of God. you got to understand what the throne is. The definition, the Greek definition of throne means the operative, come on now saints, the operative place of power and dominion. The place of preeminence above and before all things. A place that transcends, arises above everything else. A place that transcends and rises above everything. Your spirit man seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. He paid the price. He paid the price. The orange representing the war. The battles in your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind will catch up with the heart, maybe you can get saved. Saints, a place that stands out. A place God's throne. It stands out. It is conspicuous. It's not hidden over in the corner. Oh, they might be looking at me. Oh. Saints! You got the Holy Ghost. You got God's kingdom living in you. What do you want to hide for? You can't hide a light. You'll burn something up if you try to put a candle up underneath something. That's the point. 
You're a fire. You're burning. You're light. You bring life. If you ain't doing all them things, I'm the problem. Not the preacher. It ain't the preacher's place to revive you. It's your place. Because the Holy Spirit already brought you to life and quickened your spirit. So, I'm the problem. Yeah, let me take responsibility for Leslie. Why don't you take responsibility for yourself? I can preach, I can exhort, I can warn you, I can encourage you, I can urge you, I can compel you all day long. But until you get your lazy self up, you're still going to need revival, saints. Oh, I don't want to offend nobody and call them lazy. Well, I'll just... Okay. Too late. The Greek definition of a throne... Just think about it. The throne of God transcends everything else. A place that stands out and is conspicuous. It's easily seen. It's a place that represents the extreme. The uttermost. If you're not extremely faithful to the uttermost, you might need revival. That's a powerful depth. That is powerful. Like this color orange and this triumphant flag. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but the victory, woo! The triumphant victory is mine. Saints, this definition should open your understanding up so that you can understand and see. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear that are spiritual, see, hear, what God wants from you. The operative power of your of His throne is in your inward parts. Wow. He wants to increase His dominion within your person. He wants to become the preeminent one in every situation, word, thought, and deed. Especially thoughts first before they come become words, before they become deeds. The Lord God Almighty wants to be conspicuous and easily seen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. He wants you to experience Him. He lives in you, saints. He lives in you. His power, His ability to rise above every person, circumstance, and situation lives in you. You've already been given every spiritual blessing you need. Triumph. Triumph. Press in. Pray until something happens, saints. The Word of God is unmistakable. Unmistakable. Ugh. I don't know about y'all, but this is some good stuff. The church is supposed to be seen. The assembly, you and me, the gathered ones, the called out ones. Yeah, the assembly, the body of Christ. Thou art beautiful, oh my love. Terrible as an army. Woohoo! With banners. Where's that, Pastor Street? That's in the Song of Solomon's chapter 6, verse 4. Who is she that looks forth as the morning? Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible, frightening as an army with banners. Solomon, I'm Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. Think about that. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, at the rebuke of five shall you flee, till you be left as a beacon, a tough, strong flagpole. Ooh, I just happen to have the flag of triumph today, saints. Mm, warfare colors. Upon the top of a mountain and as an ensign, a banner, a flag, a sail, a signal, a pole, upon a hill. 
Isaiah 30 and 17. You are not supposed to be sitting there, not seen, not heard. You are supposed to be telling people about Jesus, the Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach, what God the Father has done for you. Your testimony, they overcome by the word of their testimony. It says so simply in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 that we're going to overcome mm, by the blood of the Lamb, the words of our testimony, and not loving our life unto death. Saints, I feel the rain. Woo-hoo-hoo! Ah, I feel the rain. Ha-ha! The rain of Jesus Christ as the line of the tribe of Judah. I feel it falling down on me. Yeah, I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Woo! Aha! I feel it falling down on me. Well, it's the fall.